the challenge of the Yukon. I'm king! I'm your Malamu! The Wonder Dog King, swiftest and strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the challenge of the Yukon. Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the new Northwest country where the greed for wealth and power led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog king met that challenge and justice ruled triumphant. Bob Andrews, trapper in the Yukon, had made a fine catch of Martin. With his heavy load of furs, he was nearing the spot on Copper River where he had buried his food and supplies for safekeeping. Coming up silently in the snow, he discovered an Indian stealing his precious supplies. To rob a man of his food was a major crime in the Yukon, and Bob Andrews' quick temper flared as he stole up sandly behind the Indian, twisted him around, and dealt him a heavy blow and knocked him to the ground. Hold up you with you this time, you thieving rat. Now maybe you'll think twice before you try that trick again. You... You got no right to hit Black Hawk. What have you got in this sack? Oh, no, you don't. There. That'll teach you to pull a knife on me, you buzzard. Now get out of here but while you can still walk. Black Hawk want knife. Think I'm crazy? Get out of here. I'm keeping this knife. You'd stick it between my shoulder blades the first chance you got. Now get. You be sorry. Black Hawk not forget. It was late afternoon, a week later, when Sergeant Preston was heading toward town with his dog team, led by the great Malamute lead dog, King. They were about ten miles from town when suddenly the great dog stopped and sniffed the air. Come on, King. What's the matter with you? What are you stopping for? Hmm, smell smoke, don't you? So do I. Not campfire smoke, either. There it is. Looks as though there's a cabin on fire. Come on, you Malamutes. Let's go. Push! King, maybe we better have a quick look in there before that cabin collapses. As Preston looked in the door, the fire cast a weird light in the interior of the small room. The roof of the cabin was about to cave in when suddenly Preston saw the figure of a woman lying on the floor, a gash in her forehead. As he rushed to take her from the cabin, he heard a cry. If I can just... Great heavens, a baby. King, get it, boy. They're on the floor. Get it quick, fella. Come on, King. We made it, King. There goes the cabin. Now I'll help you, fella. Well, there now, youngster. You're all right. Can't blame you much, old man. Don't know what scared you more. Fire or the big dog. Now, well, now, stop crying. You and your mother are going for a sleigh ride. Let's see, I guess old Frenchy DeVries' place is nearest. Oh, how are you, Malamute? Frenchy, you home? Who is it? Oh, oh, Sergeant Preston. Come in. Guess you better come out and help me, Frenchy. I got a baby and a woman on my sled. A baby and a woman? Where do you get them? Found the cabin on fire. Help me carry him in. She's unconscious. That is Mrs. Andrews. I, I carry her. You bring Kit. Well, get easy, Frenchy. Come on, young fellow. We're going in where it's warm. Yes, you can come too, King. Come along. What'll I do with a kid? Gosh, I don't know anything about babies. Hey, you stop yelling. You're okay. Put him on blanket on floor. He'll be all right. Now, stop screaming. You're not hurt. There, now. Now, lie still while I have a look at your mother. You say this was Mrs. Andrews, Bob Andrews' wife? Oui, she come here two months ago. Now, get some water, Frenchy. Oui. It's a nasty crack on the head, but I think she'll be all right. Uh, uh... Easy now. Here is water. She'll be conscious soon. All we can do is let her rest and be quiet. Where is Bob Andrews? He passed this morning on his way to town. 
He said he'd be back sometime tomorrow. I suppose he went in for supplies. Guess I better go after him. Mrs. Andrews will be all right. Just keep cool claws on her head and keep her quiet. <laughs> Look, King is licking the kid's face. King, King, quit it. You'll scare him to death. Guess you're just as bad a nursemaid as I am. Come on, boy, we're going to town. See you later, Frenchie. Oui. I'll find Bob Andrews and bring him back. The next morning, Preston and Bob Andrews were back at Frenchie's cabin. They found Mrs. Andrews pale and weak from shock, but able to talk. Will it bother you to tell us what happened, Mary? Uh, no, I, I'm all right now. I can tell you. Is your head better? Well, it, it hurts a little. I can't thank you enough, Sergeant, for saving the baby. No, don't bother about that. We want to hear what happened. It was not even Indian, wasn't it? Yes. Yes, it was an Indian. He came in while I was feeding the baby. He, he wanted money first. The dirty rat. I... I told him I had no money, and he threatened to kill me. I, I guess I lost my head a little. I put the baby down and rushed for the gun. He took it from me, and that's all I remember. Why, that rotten murder and weasel. That dirty coward. I, I shouldn't have tried to get the gun. I'll be able to pick up his trail from the cabin. Preston, I'm going with you. You'd better stay here, Bob. He tried to burn my wife and baby alive. I won't rest till he's caught. Wait, oui, I see how he must feel. But your wife and baby. Frenchie will keep him here for me, won't you, Frenchie? I got three weeks' supplies on my sled out here. You take them, Frenchie. Sure, I'll watch out for them. <laughs> I like baby around cabin. <laughs> he is company of old man like me. Preston had difficulty restraining Bob Andrews. Young and hot-tempered, he wanted neither to eat nor sleep until he got his hands on Blackhawk. Over the frozen ground they raced. By sunset, they had reached the foot of the mountains, where Preston suddenly turned off the trail. On King! This way, fellas! Preston, we're leaving the trail. It leads this way. We're spending the night at Tom Kramer's cabin, Bob. About a half mile from here. But it ain't dark yet. We could go a few miles farther. We won't find another place like this to camp. That Indian's not far ahead. We'll start out at dawn tomorrow. Uh, Preston! Come on, Bob. Stop arguing. On you, man of you! Oh, King! There we are. There's Tom. Hello, Sergeant. Glad to be here. Come on in. Would you like some company for the night, Tom? Oh, glad to have you any time. This is Bob Andrews, Tom Kramer. Howdy. There, come on in. Make yourselves to home. I'll have some supper ready shortly. I wish we didn't have to stop. We both need sleep, Bob. Oh, are you trailing somebody, Sergeant? Well, yes, Tom. We're after an Indian. He's headed up the mountains. I can't wait till I kill the car. Bob, I was hoping you'd cool off a little by now. Cool off? I won't wait till I fill him full of bullet holes. No, you can't do a thing to him. What? what do you mean? I happen to be the law around here. I appreciate how you feel, but I can't let you kill him, you know. But, Preston, my wife, my baby, he... I know, but his punishment is the law's affair. But... Man, you can't mean you won't let me deal Sorry, with... Bob, but that's exactly what I mean. Guess you'd better go out and cut some spruce branches for our beds. I'll feed the dog. Use my hatchet, Bob, there against the wall. You won't have to bother getting yours. All right. Preston, I might as well be honest with you. I'm going to kill that in, then law or no law. And face the consequences. Seems pretty determined, don't he? Yes, Tom. I wish I'd made him stay home. Well, I guess I'd better clear the table and get some supper on. Is this your rifle? No, that's Bob's. Get to me. I'll put it over here in the corner. It was after midnight, and Bob Andrews lay wide-eyed on his bed in the cabin. The heavy breathing of Preston and snores of Tom told him they were sleeping soundly. Quietly, he crept from his bed, picked up his rifle, and stole silently out into the Arctic night. The rising moon lighted his path as he headed back to the mountain trail. Preston awoke as early dawn was breaking. Ooh. I guess time to shove off. Bob. Hey, Bob. Bob. You fellas starting this early, Sergeant? Bob's gone. Gone? What do you mean? He must have sneaked off in the middle of the night and he's taken his gun. Well, for the love of Pete, I didn't hear nothing. I've got to stop him, Tom. Oh, you don't stand much chance of catching him if he gets a couple of hours start. He's too tired to go very fast. But if I can't catch him, King can. I'll send King ahead after him. He'll hold him till I get there. Come on, King. Yes, I'll go along with you. This sounds exciting. 
King, see this trail? Get him, boy. Get him and hold him. Hold him till I get there. On, King! <laughs> Later that morning, Bob Andrews was plodding up the mountain slope. He didn't know that ahead of him, higher up in the mountain, he was being watched by the sharp black eyes of Blackhawk, who crouched behind a boulder, his rifle ready. Suddenly, Bob heard something behind him and saw the form of a huge dog rushing upon him. Why, it's King! King, what are you... Hey, hey get off of me, you fool! I ain't the one you're after! Get out of you cur... No! No, oh, you fool! If I can get a hold of my rifle, I'll kill him! No! Go on by arm. I can kill you, you devil of a dog. Further down the slope, Preston and Tom raced frantically up the trail. He can't be far ahead. Kings have caught it by this time. I'm surprised we ain't found him by now. Hey, look. Way up the side ahead there. See that big rock? There's somebody behind there. And somebody shooting. Tom, that's Blackhawk. He must be shooting at Bob. It sure is. We've got to hurry. Preston, stop, look. That rock and snow above Blackhawk. It's moving. Great Scott, those shots. They've started an avalanche. <laughs> well, that's the last of Blackhawk. Gosh, what a sight. Poor devil. Come on, Tom. Let's hope King and Bob weren't in the path of it, too. After what seemed hours to Preston of toiling up the steep trail, he heard a faint cry and came upon the half-buried figures of Bob and King. The great dog still crouched over Bob. Bob? King? Are you all right? Help. Oh, get me out of here. They're alive anyway. They went right in the path of it. No, Preston. We're almost buried. Well, don't worry, Bob. We'll have you out in a minute. King boy, are you still alive? I think we can pull him out. Oh! No. You're safe. Can you stand? Yeah. I guess I, I'm just bruised. Here, hold on to me. King saved you a lot of injuries. Poor old fellow. You really had to take it this time. Come on, boy. Let me look at you. Oh, no bones broken. Some bad cuts on his back. What's that blood on his neck from? Looks as if a bullet creased him. Gosh, you're sure lucky, Bob. He saved your life. Saved my life. I was almost killed on account of him. Oh, I got a shot that dirty end in, but this fool dog held me here. Wouldn't let me get my rifle. He thought I was the one he was supposed to catch. King was following orders, Bob. Orders? You mean you told him to hold me? Yes, he was told to hold you until I got here. You mean you were trying to save the life of that dirty redskin at the risk of mine? I was trying to save your life, Bob. It didn't occur to me that you'd sneak off last night the way you did. I knew you were planning to kill Black Hawk, so while you were out of the cabin last night, I took all the bullets out of your gun. My, my gun was empty? You'd have been quite helpless if you'd caught up with Black Hawk. As it was, thank heaven, nature took a hand in it. And nature did a pretty good job, too. He'll never <laughs> harm anyone again. Come on, King boy. We'll take it easy going down. Won't take long for those bruises to heal. Yes, we can rest now, boy. The looks of that heap of rubble at the bottom of the mountain. The case is closed. These copyrighted dramas originate in the studios of WXYZ Detroit. And all characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. They are sent to you each week at the same time and reach you from our transcription studios. Al Neal speaking. This is the Michigan Radio Network.